Hello and welcome to Searching the Scriptures, a daily podcast where Bible topics will be discussed and Bible questions will be given Bible answers. No opinion, just Bible. This episode is Lesson 2 of our look at the book of 2 Corinthians. In the last episode we covered the introduction to the book of 2 Corinthians and in this episode we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. Let's open our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and begin reading at verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy our brother, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in, uh, in all Achaia. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. In these verses we have Paul's greeting to the church at Corinth. Remember, we open the Bible and say, well, these, this is the book of 2 Corinthians. Really, it is the letter of 2 Corinthians. It is to be read as a letter. And so that's why Paul begins with a greeting. We don't usually begin books with greetings. We begin letters with greetings. And so Paul is greeting the church at Corinth and all the saints that are in Achaia, uh, which is uh, surrounding Corinth. That's the region that Corinth is in. Paul begins by stating that he is an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, Paul does this in all of his letters except for four, in the book of Philippians, in the book of First and Second Thessalonians, and the book of Philemon. But in every other book that Paul writes, he identifies himself as an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, Paul wasn't one of the 12 original apostles of Jesus Christ. He wasn't even the 13th apostle because Matthias took Judas' place. Those were the apostles that people generally recognized, oh, these are Jesus' apostles. But Paul was also an apostle of Jesus Christ. He was an apostle by the will of God. And that is important because Paul is going to be dealing with that very topic throughout much of this book. But Paul is an apostle of Jesus Christ not because, just because he says he is, but because the Lord says he is. We have three uh, accounts of Paul's conversion found in the book of Acts. Let's go to Acts chapter 19, verses 15 and 16. Acts 9, Acts 9, sorry, beginning at verse 15. But the Lord said to him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Here Ananias is uh, a man who is a teacher, and he was told by Jesus to go preach to Paul, who was known, at, known as Saul of Tarsus at that time. Ananias knew the reputation of Saul as a persecutor, and he said, well, don't you know who this man is? And Jesus tells him, yes, I know who this man is. He is a chosen vessel unto me to go preach to the Gentiles and to, to go preach to kings and to go preach to the children of Israel. He does all of those things. He was selected by Jesus to do, uh, uh, to preach, sorry, to the Gentiles. In Acts chapter 22, we get another um, account of Paul's conversion. Here, Ananias is the one speaking. In verse 14, we read, And he said, The God of our fathers has chosen you, that you should know his will, and see that just one, and should hear the voice of his mouth. For you shall be witnesses unto all men of what you have seen and heard. So in this account, we have Ananias telling Paul about what his purpose is. But again, he says, God has chosen you. So he was chosen by God. In Acts chapter 26, let's read verses 16 through 18. Acts 26, beginning at verse 16. But rise and stand up, uh, but rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and witness both of the things which you have seen and those things in which I will appear unto you, delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles. Unto, unto whom now I send you, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive the forgiveness of sins, and, and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Now here again we have Jesus speaking, but he's not speaking to Ananias, he's speaking directly to Paul. So we have three accounts, they're all giving us different details. One, the Lord speaks to Ananias, telling uh, Ananias, Paul is chosen. Another Ananias is speaking to Saul, and he is saying, you are chosen. And in this account, we have Jesus speaking directly to Saul and saying, you have been chosen. He has been selected to be an apostle by Jesus Christ. 
And so we need to recognize that that's the state that Paul is in. He is being questioned about his apostleship because he is not being recognized as one selected by Jesus. But he clearly states time and time again, I have been selected by Jesus. Now Paul was with Timothy. This is a man that the Corinthians knew. We know that from 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Timothy, uh, it was said, might come to Corinth uh, uh, when Paul was writing the book of 1 Corinthians. We do not know if he ever got there at the end of that letter, but this is a man that the Corinthians would know, and that's why he is identified in chapter 1. Now again, he is writing to the church at Corinth and to the saints in all Achaia, which is Greece. As we pass by, I'd like to notice what Paul called them. He called them saints. Now he was writing to people who were alive. He was not writing to people who were dead. And the reason why I bring that up is because the Catholic Church only ordains saints if you have been dead for so long and performed so many miracles after you had been dead. That's not what the Bible describes as saints in the scriptures. Paul talks about the Roman church in Romans chapter 1, and he again calls those people saints. In Romans chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, Among whom also you are also the called of Jesus Christ, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. If we are Christians, we are already saints. We do not have to wait to be venerated as a saint by the Pope in Rome. It's another place where we can show that the Roman Catholic Church is a false church. It doesn't follow what the Bible says. All Christians are saints, not just a few of them. And Paul concludes verse 2, says, Grace uh, to you and peace from God our Father. This is a common prayer of Paul. It is mentioned 13 times in the New Testament by Paul. And so this is Paul's greeting. He says who he is, who he's with, who he's writing to, and he gives them a short prayer to end his greeting. So in the next episode, we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 11, and Paul is going to be here reflecting on suffering and comfort. So we hope you can join us with, in that episode. But perhaps you're listening and you're not a Christian. The brethren here in Toronto would love to study the Bible with you so that you could hear the Word of God. Believe it and obey it before it is everlastingly too late. If you'd like to set up a study, you can send us an email at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. On behalf of the East End Church of Christ in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode. For free online Bible-based material or to get directions to our meeting place, you can visit our website at www.eastendchurch.org. While there, you'll also find links to more of our podcasts as well as links to the live broadcasts of our services. Should you have any questions about this or any of the other podcasts you may have listened to, you may leave a comment below or email us at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. Please join me, the Lord willing, again in the next episode when we will be discussing another topic from God's Word. Goodbye for now and have a great day.